Hi, uh, in this video I'm going to be giving a quick run through of our new customer cohorts report feature, which has just been put live and is in beta. And you'll find it in the left under a new cohorts option in the side menu. And over here I'm just looking at the first customer cohorts report, which looks at returning customers over time. But we actually have quite a few of them which you can view all from the cohorts page here and find the one that you're looking for. Uh, if your store has profit reporting set up, you'll notice we have some profit-related cohort reports as well. So I'll just jump into the first one to show you how it works. Uh, top right here, we've chosen the date period. So we're looking at customers that, in this case, first ordered between April 2018 and October 2020. And then that's split into monthly cohorts. And we can see over time uh, the number of customers that returned in each consecutive month. So if we just highlight over a period here, we could look at for the October 2018, oh, November 2018 cohort, 1.7% uh, of that cohort, 17 customers, returned to make another order in their six months. And um, it's quite useful because as you start to look at a larger period here, like the last couple of years, we can see where the average is at the bottom. So we can see like on average by month six, 18 are returning in that. And then we can see over time, as we scroll across, how that changes. And here you'll notice it's just showing the number, but we can also toggle to show the uh, percentage instead. So here we can see, for example, September 2018 cohort, 2.4% of that cohort, 35 customers, returned and made another order in the third month. And uh, you know, with these reports, uh, depends on what you're looking for, but a lot of different numbers are provided. So if we jump into the orders per customer one, we can just see on average, the average number of orders per customer and then over time how that changes and here we'll see like slowly over time it does start to increase as these customers from each cohort return to make more orders in turn increasing the average number of orders per cohort and again we can toggle to percent if you prefer to view it like that uh, i'll jump into another one that's really useful ltv over time so this one shows like the lifetime value the average lifetime value of each customer in the cohort, how that grows over time. And if we scroll back to the start here, we can see on average it starts around that 200 number and then over time it increases, which would make sense if customers do return over time to make consecutive orders. So we can see as we get into month 12 to month 24 and beyond, uh, it's getting a little bit darker, symbolizing that the number in proportion to the rest of the numbers is getting higher. And we can see, which makes sense, that the average customer lifetime value does grow over time as customers return. You'll notice this chart at the top as well, which can be useful. And what this is showing is the average. So the numbers that you see down the bottom, the averages for each month over time. And that can help you just understand, you know, from a very bird's eye view, how that average lifetime value is changing over time and growing. And up here, we also have some averages. So you can just quickly see at a glance by month three, by month six, what is the average lifetime value based on all the customers that we're looking at here. Uh, and if you prefer to look at this, you know, perhaps on a yearly basis, that's possible too. We can just click year, give it a sec to reload, and we'll now see it split up into yearly cohorts and the consecutive years rather than monthly cohorts and the consecutive months. Week is also an option, uh, but when you're looking at a large period, like two years, there's gonna be hundreds of weeks, a lot of consecutive weeks, so it's too large and not as useful to see it in that amount of time. So instead, we can make it a three month period like this, then we'll be able to toggle to week. And then we can see that we now have it split into cohorts of weeks, and then the week on week kind of growth of those cohorts, which can be useful if you're, you know, have a much higher uh, frequency. If your customers tend to order every couple of weeks, it might be useful to see it on a weekly basis. Or if you're performing different kind of marketing campaigns that are changing on that frequent basis, again, it might be useful to look at it in the cohorts by week rather than by month. But for the majority of uh, stores and situations, monthly cohorts are going to probably be the most useful. Uh, and I'll also jump into a couple others here. So we have like orders over time which will just show you for this cohort. So let's go back here. And we're still just looking at that three month period, but we can change that perhaps to um, a little bit longer. And then now for this longer period, we can see 
the orders made over time. So what would make sense, yep, most of these customers, of course, have made an order in their first month, since that's how we're uh, grouping them. But you'll see that some months are a little bit higher, which would symbolize that uh, customers here, there's 1,029 customers, but there was 1,036 orders in the first month. So either seven customers ordered twice, or perhaps one customer ordered a few times. And then we can see over time that it tends to drop because a lot of customers aren't returning. If you want to look at this on a cumulative basis as well, you can do that by checking the box here. And then it will start to show over time the cumulative number of orders per cohort. And yeah, again, this is really useful when it comes to try and understand like of your cohorts, which are performing better, at what point you start to see drop-offs. And this is a test store, so we're not gonna find too many insights in this test data, but we can, you know, for example, see down here that um, the March 2019 cohort by their 15th month has a lot more orders um, than, you know, a similar one, maybe like this, 1,000, 1,100, 1,350. Uh, so you can start to find trends as you look into it a bit further. Uh, for example, as well, average order value over time is quite useful. So you can see how that changes and if you uh, increase prices or over time if customers are spending more, you'll be able to figure that out by looking at this. And another really useful one is by order count. So this one works a little bit differently and instead of showing it over the months, it'll show the cohorts, so monthly cohorts, and then how many from each cohort fall into these different buckets of order counts. Uh, for example, if we look here at July 2018, 10, uh, 1,087 customers, 573 of them have made one order, 320 have made two, and so on. Uh, and again, really useful just for understanding, okay, well, co customers that joined in this cohort, are they returning, and if so, what percent are returning and how many? And we can actually change that to percent if you prefer to see percentages instead of whole numbers. With this and all of these cohort reports, you can export it and get a CSV of this entire table's data. Uh, and another really useful feature that I haven't even touched on yet is segmenting. So maybe I'll jump back into the LTV over time one. If we go in here and click segment, we can actually change it and say, well, I don't want to look at all customers that first order between these dates. I want to look at customers who first category they purchased from was perhaps Jazz. So we'll notice these numbers are going to get a little bit smaller since we're not looking at every single customer now, and a lot have bought from that category, so it's still quite high, but we might add uh, another filter and say, well, in this case, I actually only want to look at customers that do return and have made two or more orders. And we should note that the, yeah, the average is going to get a lot higher because we're now excluding any customers that have only ordered once, and we can see it just for that segment. Uh, an interesting thing here, right, if you're looking at any of these and you see, for example, okay, 432 customers in October 2018 from that, with those filters, we can actually click on the 432, and you'll note that it shows the exact 432 customers that match those filters for that report. So you can go a bit further if you want to actually look into the customers behind uh, a cohort. This is just the first iteration of the cohort reports. Uh, we've been working on this for a while, but we actually have quite a lot planned for it, including grouping by uh, different cohorts, like first product purchase, first coupon use, the source, uh, but we didn't want to wait to get this out there. So yeah, feel free to try it out. Any feedback, any issues, please let us know. And yeah, we really hope you like this new feature from us. Thank you.